due to the timing, uh, because of timing. Um, and that is, uh, that is, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine to condense. Uh, now, in the 90s, we know, I mean, if we are going to talk about the, the theories and the translation theories, in the 60s being linguistic, moving up to Steiner and uh, hermeneutics, and, and then moving down to uh, culture and translation, um, Susan Bassnett and uh, Snell Holmby in, the, in 1988, and then moving to uh, Lefebvre, or how they pronounce it in French, Lefebvre, um, uh, in 1991, 1991, uh, with Suzanne Bassnet, and they talk about the culture turn, and and and, and then moving on to uh, the 2000 and 2010 uh, ideology and translation and Mona Baker, um, and she talks about the narrative theory, which was as late as 2007, um, if my memory doesn't fail me here. Now. All of these are linked together. I mean, if we go to Lefebvre and also patronage, who is sub, what are we subtitling if we are talking about Lefebvre and subtitling? Uh, who is the, uh, the patronage element here? Uh, 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 it's very similar to the publisher. Who is my publisher? The publisher will not publish anything. Uh, they need to publish certain things. So there is an influence by publishers and there is influence by the institution uh, by a political group, by a religious group, all of these are linked to um, uh, subtitling a, a particular audiovisual material. And just a good example of this is in, um, I, I can't remember now the exact date, but I've written it in one of my papers about a bishop in, uh, called Williams. Now this bishop was talking about, uh, uh, about the Holocaust and, and that. Uh, even the choice between subtitling and dubbing can be a politicized. Because if you subtitle, and this is what happened actually in real fact for Al Jazeera at the time, that is in uh, 2006, 2007, uh, is that I asked uh, the producer, I said, which one do you want? Do you want it to be dubbed so that we can prepare a dubbed version and we can voice over um, this uh, bishop? Uh, who is um, uh, Bishop of England, I think, um, Archbishop, and um, whether to dub that piece or to subtitle it. And of course, he, he, he resorted to subtitling. He says, because we want to hear the original, because everybody needs to hear the original, especially as he's saying, there aren't many people who have been involved in the Holocaust uh, uh, as victims. So you see, uh, this is translation and politics. Uh, uh, which, which reminds me of Schaffner, Christina Schaffner, for example. But uh, you can also talk about contextualization as well. And then you go back, you go forward to 2015 and 2018 for, um, for quality assessment and um, uh, Julian Howes uh, and, and uh, Nord, Christina Nord. So you see, uh, this is really part of, uh, not subtitling, it's actually part of translation itself. Though there are some constraints which we know about in terms of you need to read this very quickly, the reading speed needs to be very fast. There are lots of um, uh, uh, studies uh, regarding, for example, eye movement, uh, 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 monitoring the eye movement of the viewers to see how they can look at the picture, the image, image and the subtitle at the bottom and be able to follow the film, not only just to read the text from the bottom and not worry what the text, what, what the film is saying, what the image is saying, what the sound is saying. And that is also a proof of what they are saying about uh, the combination, the overlapping of image and, 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 and uh, sound and text. So you see all of these combined and to just say um, the technical aspects um, uh, with regards to reading speed, with regards to color, um, obviously if it's black and white, you use um, a drop shadow for the, for, for, the, uh, for the letters, so the letters can appear clearly on screen because there's a black and white film, uh, you need to make it stand out. So I mean, it, it is, there is a little bit of element of that, yes, 
the positioning as well is another element, yes. I mean, that is, um, why positioning was a little, bit of, a little bit of a problem at one stage because when we were doing dubbing, uh, not dubbing, when we were subtitling a, a DVD uh, of a film, it used to be uh, subtitled by uh, 34 languages. So uh, the positioning was important because the Chinese and the Japanese, they use it upside down from the sides of the, of the screen and not at the bottom of the screen. And we have the problem of uh, left aligned and right aligned, uh, right aligned. And, and that is also because of uh, the English or uh, the Latin uh, based uh, languages. They tend to start from, uh, from one alignment, uh, left or right, uh, before Arabic or English. So that is really, yes, yes, it is uh, very little things here and there, but these are not really the massive, most important element in subtitling or in ABT in general, uh, whether you want to talk about subtitle in particular or in general, it, they are not. Duration is important as well, because in dubbing, it's uh, 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 one line requires five seconds to read, for example, whereas in five seconds, you can do two subtitles. Um, you can read two subtitles in five seconds. And what's the minimum uh, duration for a subtitle is 1.02 frames, because frames means pictures, plus the one second, uh, and so on. But these are only um, technical elements. Where do I cut, where do I split the line? Of course, this is like in, in interpreting, simultaneous interpreting. And you know that in simultaneous interpreting, if you are uh, exposed to this kind of thing, um, and I have been doing uh, live, uh, live interpreting for Al Jazeera for five years at one time, um, after 2000, 2004, five. Now, in uh, simultaneous interpreting, you do what's called a segmentation. And in segmentation, you segment the text um, where it can be a phrase, but it has to be a full phrase in each line in the subtitle, uh, on a sub in a subtitle in one subtitle and each line should have a phrase which is full you can't just have the preposition at the end and then the second line uh, is uh, the rest of the prepositional uh, phrase uh, or the prepositional uh, 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 constituent uh, now this is really uh, these are important but not as important as the content this is very very it's much more important and uh, uh, needs to be considered. Um, I really don't know. I mean, I am. I mean, if, if you if you are going to talk about still um, about traditional theories uh, in translation studies like venuti and uh, domestication and foreignizing, whether to translate and put a little bit of paratext, paratext meaning like footnotes and, and things like that, which you cannot do in subtitling, obviously. Uh, but you can do that in printed translation. Um, you can't do that in dubbing either. So uh, this is the paratext is an issue uh, with regards to subtitling. Uh, so paratextuality, which whether it is uh, peri text, uh, i.e. Uh, around the text, information about that about the text, like the preface, uh, the title, the title of the film, for example, uh, how you translate it. Um, and uh, the cover of the book, if it's a book, um, and uh, an introduction by the translator. Um, whereas the epi text, of course, is, is, is related to um, an interview with the translator or interview or conversation with them or a review by someone about quality of the end product, i.e. the TT. So I, no, I mean, there's also drama, drama. I mean, I, I have written uh, recently uh, a co-authored co with another, uh, it's a forthcoming uh, paper uh, with uh, Dr. or Professor Arig from, from uh, Helwan University about the link which I have noticed between, or we have noticed, between drama texts, how to translate uh, uh, theater texts, and um, audiovisual translation, because there is similar um, uh, 
setting, for example, the setting for the drama, for the, for example, we were, we were talking about uh, Julius Caesar, and that in each act you will have also information about the situation of that text and who is producing the text and who is receiving the text. And because it's a dialogue, or if you, even if it's a monologue, still you have uh, the text producer. And just going back text, uh, to, to uh, the next scenes and the conversation and um, uh, subtitled as um, a communication act, uh, uh, where, where you have this kind of performable uh, text, readable text, um, comprehensible text is, 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 is also extremely important by the receiver. So comprehensibility is extremely, extremely, extremely important by the viewer. And that is also another uh, element which you need to be aware of is the audience. The audience design, the design of the audience. Who are my audience? If I am subtitling, for example, if we are talking about subtitling or dubbing for that matter, the choice of words play an extremely important uh, part in uh, the subtitling of that audiovisual material. If uh, it's a video for, um, for, um, uh, for a hospital, for example, corporate video, uh, corporate video means videos by uh, private uh, entities or companies, the video itself, for example, is addressing a pregnant women. Then I have to know that this, I'm not addressing here the medical, uh, medical staff. I'm not addressing doctors and nurses. I'm addressing the maybe housewives who may not know a lot about the technical words or uh, terminology. So I'm not going to use very difficult words for them, um, i.e. medical terminology. And I'm not going to use all these morphemes, uh, laryngitis or, 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 or uh, uh, rhino, uh, laryngitis, uh, or, or whatever. Uh, rhino means the, the nose, and laryngitis means the throat. So I would say ENT, uh, ear, nose, ear, and throat. So I would choose different kind of wording because this video is targeting this kind of people, this kind of audience, uh, who are housewives, may not be uh, quite literate uh, or highly educated. Uh, they, they are not going to be doctors and nurses. But if I am doing a video which is targeting or addressing all the medical staff, doctors and nurses, obviously I'm going to use the most sophisticated words they use the terminology they use. So terminology is nothing to do with subtitling uh, in terms of technical element. It is actually the choice of terms that I have to be aware of. Um, and these terms are extremely important uh, to know them as a subtitler. Uh, for example, when I was doing ER or when I was doing um, uh, 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 Grey's Anatomy series, um, it's full of uh, two types of uh, text types. So I need to be aware as a subtitler of the two texts, two types of texts that I used, text types. You have conversation going on, and you are also using some technical, highly medical words uh, in their own, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the actual uh, uh, body of the text. And metn and nas, metn and nas. So this is really extremely important to be aware that I am actually here in the uh, race anatomy, I'm talking to everybody here. Whereas if I am preparing a video for the medical staff uh, to know how to use uh, an equipment, for example, medical equipment, or how to do an operation of some sort, then I have to use the highly technical words, the uh, terminology, medical terminology. Same applies to pharmaceutical. I was teaching pharmaceutical uh, 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 pharmaceutical translation. So, uh, or even um, uh, when it comes to petroleum, okay, or engineering, still you have to use the same thing. We have called in lab as well. These two. Uh, so, so all of these are highly technical, but I need to understand them. I need to translate them. Of course, this is extremely important. What what um, 
uh, Danica uh, Seleskovic in interpreting says, do not interpret what you don't understand. Do not subtitle what you don't understand. If you don't understand something, don't subtitle it. End of story. If you don't know the message, if you can't, uh, if you don't understand the message, don't subtitle it. And, and that's at the end of it, you know? And just going back to also about the, um, about the uh, traditional uh, 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 theories, well, I forget, I'm trying to remember now, I forgot that point uh, uh, in regards to uh, traditional theories, uh, terminology. I'm trying to remember what, what my last point is. I've forgotten it because I haven't, I haven't written any notes. That's the thing uh, about it. And I forgot now what my point is here with regards to that. But basically, oh yes, I remember now. It's pragmatics. Now, I have one student who did implicatures, and this is pragmatics, conversation, and the maxims, and speech acts, you know, locution, elocution, perlocution, whether, uh, and the best examples in films is uh, 007. For example, uh, Casino Royale is a good one. Uh, Jackie, Sha uh, Jackie Chan, uh, Chan, Jackie Chan's films, uh, which I've subtitled some of them, um, they do actually show that, that kind of uh, implicatures in uh, not only what is explicitly said, but there is an implied um, uh, message behind it. Sometimes you need to um, try to understand uh, that kind of thing. So of course, there are double entendre uh, used as well, uh, mostly in um, uh, there were seven uh, films, the old ones, uh, but this double entendre, in, it, it's in any language, okay? There are also the taboo language, which requires euphemisms, um, depending on who is my target audience, and the shopping element in, in addressing my audience. Now, of course, uh, uh, talking about the audience and the design of the audience, uh, Vermeer in uh, Scopus Theory, the purpose of the translation. What is the purpose of it? Now, I, that reminds me of uh, Tory and uh, what they what they have pointed out about uh, uh, they were subtitling uh, some uh, children's movies, children's uh, TV series. At one stage, I can't remember now the article and who has written it, but it was about Tory and and and, and uh, uh, the poly uh, system theories theory. Um, where they were translating, and these are um, Hebrew translators, uh, they were translating some German children literature, okay, uh, from German into Hebrew. And they uh, have decided, I meant by they, the patronage, the people who are controlling, they have the power, they have the uh, uh, um, the factors, the control uh, factors, uh, whether, uh, which Lo Fever talks about. They were controlling it. Let's say they have removed from these children uh, literature uh, when they were translating it, and that's not for subtitling. They removed the parts that are related to Jews. So there is that element of domestication here, okay? The domestication that we know about. Uh, where you are taking the uh, author to the reader, uh, as Schleimacher says in, 19, in 1813. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, so the power, the institution who is actually uh, controlling this element of what you can and can't say as well in the video itself, and especially if you're translating also religious uh, texts, it has got its own um, minefields, shall we call them, um, in, in that. And then you have to worry about what to mention and what to not to mention and, um, and, and the taboo language as well, and censorship element as well. I think I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to stop here. Um, and maybe I, I don't know whether uh, I need to carry on I mean, uh, about this, or I would like to uh, hear from you um, I mean, I have covered quite a, in a very, very snapshot, shall we say, 
uh, some uh, very, very little, it's a drop in the sea, if you like, um, about what AVT is and what it, uh, it is not. And uh, I mean, I, I, I remember now uh, what uh, Dr. Uh, Beida is saying about uh, the softwares. There are so many softwares that you can choose from uh, Swift and Spot and uh, Softel and uh, Wingcaps. Uh, all of them are just um, very good, um, uh, and you can uh, purchase them for uh, academic purposes, um, and that is available in the market as well. Um, I don't know whether I should, um, I don't know what to, I mean, I, the thing is that I don't know what you would like me to talk about. I mean, I have just given you a few little things here and there, uh, maybe to tickle your uh, uh, your mind, maybe you can come up with some questions for me. I don't know. I mean, what do you think, Victoria Baida? Yes, sure. Just a second, Mushta. So you allow me first to uh, arrange things. Uh, sure. Thank you very much for this for this illuminating lecture. And um, I, I'd like to say that we are all learning, including me, because the field has been very recently introduced to our translation departments, and mm -hmm. I think this uh, our department is just the first in Iraq to have it. And um, yes, we are all learning, and I think that um, uh, we have really um, benefited from some of the cases you have told us about, and we still have more to ask about. For example, uh, when you just talked about Julian House and North. I thought, I, I have always been thinking when I read about audiovisual translation or, or teach, that we should start translation theories from scratch for AVT purposes, because everything is different. The factors are different, the purposes, the audience, the decision making, everything. So the first question is, uh, should we should we really try to start to build new translations translation theories uh, uh, for for the purpose of AVT, which are completely different from translation theories for written or inter written translation or interpretation? This is number one, and number two. Uh, uh, number two is. Um, about decision making. I, I think it's the most important thing in doing translations for AVT because you have first to put the audience in mind and number two, because you are always in this um, difficult situation, whether to transfer things as they are in order to educate the audience because you don't have to present everything that, that they already know uh, and whether to try to simplify things for them and go down to their level. I, this, that this is an eternal debate in the field of translation studies. So could you please tell us something about uh, uh, work experience where you have been through such cases where you translated something and then on a second thought, you thought that you could have done something differently. For example, uh, you could have taken other factors into consideration. These are the most very important two points for me. If you would like to answer them first, and then we go to the students or should we write down everything first? No, I mean, I, I don't mind either way. I could answer these uh, if you want, uh, uh, if you may, um, allow me to do so. Now, with regards to um, new translation theories, I don't think you need uh, new translation theories. The, trans the existing ones uh, can, do the, um, can do that. Um, now, there is, I have read something about, about um, as, as recent as, uh, published as 2019 uh, by Venuti, where he talked about instrumentalism and contra-instrumentalism, which he's calling, what he's calling. And uh, 
that would be interesting for your students to have a look at and read that book by Venuti in 2019. I uh, can't remember the exact title, but it's Contra Inst Instrumentalism. He was attacking, actually, in the subtitle in section in the chapter, uh, uh, the one of the uh, well-known uh, scholars, Goitlip and Goitlip Henrik uh, Goitlip, uh, that he was uh, very much into the linguistic side of that he's uh, not dealing with uh, what he called contra instrumentalism. Um, I think new theories. I don't think we need new theories because it's only the technical side which is an issue. For example, the audience design is still the same. If you are translating for children, children books, you have to use a certain language used by children. For example, um, uh, it's so Raven uh, and uh, High School Musical. Um, these are uh, and a little Einstein, and these are ones that I've done uh, a long time ago. Uh, you can see that the my audience are, are, are known to me. Um, I know that they are going to be the high school musical. Uh, it's not going to be for adults. Uh, they're going to be for young uh, 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 young viewers. Um, uh, little Einstein uh, for children learning. Uh, that's what's called idiotainment, uh, well known in this. Um, so you choose the kind of decision making with regards to the choice of words, uh, which will be simplified, as in the case of, for example, schizophrenia. You wouldn't, uh, they make a, a fun of the word in um, like Little Einstein first, uh, at the beginning of that episode. And then by the end, they say it's split personality. He says, what? Schizo, schizo, what? Schizo, schizophrenia. Schizo, schizophrenia. And they start making a joke about it. So here, Fusan, Fusan, Shaksia, and Fusan, ah, what? Then here you are all, you are doing the same thing uh, in terms of playing the map and choosing the words. Now, when it comes to also decision making here uh, with regards to other situations, as in the case of another uh, quite um, sensitive uh, um, uh, dialogue, shall we say, between two uh, male uh, characters talking to each other and saying one of them to the other, something to do with the underwear of another lady standing somewhere not very far from them. Now that is, it was translated, I translated, I subtitled it as is at the time and one of the uh, editorial control uh, officer he came to me he says look look i mean do you expect the audience as you know which was at the time in 1991-92 he says do you expect the audience to actually watch this and read this so he's just made me aware that i shouldn't be foreignizing that much shall we say in my approach to translation when it comes to taboo language or taboo uh, uh, text, uh, whether it's uh, taboo text can be political, religious, or SEX uh, related. So I have, so I have to reconsider, and that is to answer your question on that. Now about simplification and oversimplification, we, this is not required to oversimplify, no. And uh, oversimplification, overexplication <laughs> is not required in any um, any kind of translation unless it is actual, um, uh, unless it's, it's, it's for children and it, unless you have got the, uh, the, it's a slow pace kind of video where you have more time the duration element is allowing you to do that. Uh, usually this is a luxury when there is a speaker who is pausing a lot, trying to think and speak. And that is when you can actually add a little bit more of text 
just a little bit, not much. So, I mean, that is really um, relating to what the speed of the speaker is, whether it's interrupting uh, or even in, uh, um, in, in, in audiovisual material that you are watching or uh, for somebody who is giving a lecture or uh, a conference and he is talking and you are subtitled. There is also what reminds me of this is that uh, in Berlin Conference Film Festival, usually they ask for live subtitling uh, as well, uh, or they want the turnover or turnaround will be very, very high. You have to finish the subtitle uh, film so quickly so that you have to finish it really fast and that. And that reminds me actually, when you said about uh, new theories, I mean, uh, translation as a process, translation as a product. We know this uh, very common uh, uh, dichotomy, if you like. Um, uh, as a process, are we talking, we are, we can, you can look at the conditions of the subtitlers or the dubbers, how much they are paid, are they going to be um, uh, voicing the actual script themselves or somebody else is going to do that, um, uh, what the deadlines are like, uh, what are the conditions, the work conditions, uh, what kind of software they are using, all of these are to the process, not only the decision making process, but also the process of uh, the actual uh, subtitle itself and, and whether it's dubbing. So I would say the process of audiovisual translation. So we do not need to reinvent the wheel here. We need to um, add to uh, what is what does what already exists there in uh, the theories. And the theories are just very, very, are just as important as learning the technical side, the technical side is just a little bit, and not going to be Over um, simplification, definitely not acceptable. Not acceptable in subtitling uh, uh, for children uh, program, even though you simplify, but you don't oversimplify. You don't oversimplify. I, I, I hope that I have actually covered your points, uh, Victoria Vega. Any other comments or any other uh, points, comments, remark, question you want to ask? Yes. Anybody wants to ask anything particular about a particular point? Or you want me to elaborate on something? Uh waiting for any kind of, please feel free to ask anything you have in mind. Um, no matter how simple or, uh, it can be just a very simple thing. Uh, you might think it's simple, um, but it may not be, it might be of interest to others. So please feel free to ask anything you want or you have in mind um, about, uh, about ABT. Indeed, about translation, if you like. Um, just a second, please. Uh, do you all hear me? Because I think I lost my mic. Yes, yes, we, I can hear you, Professor. Yes, yes, good, great. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, uh, Professor Fadru. Uh, but uh, first, let me welcome the head of our department, Dr. Mahdi Ghazai, who has been trying to join us right from the beginning, but for technical problems, he couldn't join us until just, I think, 20 minutes ago. So, so welcome him to our session. Uh, and yes, welcome, uh, yes. Dr. Mahdi. Um, if you would like to um, uh, point out about something, you're most welcome. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi I want to express my deep gratitude to Dr. Khadro for his nice uh, presentation. Although I joined late due to technical problems involved uh, that prevented me from joining uh, from the early beginning of this uh, nice uh, lecture. And, uh, concerning uh, concerning the, the interpretation, I mean, mm -hmm. 
especially simultaneous interpretation. Yes. I come across many researches done on anticipation yes. in uh, simultaneous interpretation. Yes. And they say that it plays a vital role in this uh, type of translation, which is oral translation. Uh, what is your comment concerning anticipation? Uh, I, I, I don't think, I mean, anticipation uh, in interpreting is, 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 um, uh, is based on uh, the research that uh, the interpreter does before going to the conference to do the interpreting. Uh, through their research, they anticipate because they say, some Sorry concepts. for this interruption. Sure. Because they say that, that the, the simultaneous or consecutive interpreter should mm -hmm. have encyclopedic knowledge before he gets involved in this uh, task. Um, yeah, no, not encyclopedic uh, knowledge, but you see, in interpreting, um, uh, and, and, um, I'm sure. And, uh, uh, for, uh, and for those for those who are who are, who are uh, doing interpreting, um, they, they they know that it is not really. Um, it's like uh, I see you in the in the corridor and say, "Excuse me, can you please come and interpret?" And you just come in and jump in and interpret, uh, particularly in conferences. Uh, usually, in interpreting, <coughs> you are you tend to um, you tend to have like two or three days beforehand to be able to prepare. Um, some of the material that you were expecting to be discussed. Yes. And while you are preparing, you come across terminology in both languages. And, and when you do that, you, you are uh, uh, so remembering so them in translation both, both brief. languages. Like a translation brief. It is similar to the brand. No, that, uh, we ask, it's similar to that, but it's a much bigger, bigger scale because what you do as an interpreter, um, and that's what they do in the UN and in Brussels. And when I was doing my uh, interpreting, I know, I knew at the time that what the topic is about, uh, what are they going to discuss, roughly speaking, uh, what, um, and then I, I go and read all these articles in both languages, watch uh, what, what is on media, on the media, uh, TV, radio, um, uh, in the newspapers, uh, what is on the internet and so on, in order to have some knowledge, uh, background knowledge about the topic, uh, so that I know the equivalence uh, or the equivalence of all these different terminologies used, because sometimes the terminologies that are used in English are not exactly translated into Arabic and vice versa. So therefore, I go and do that as an interpreter when I know that it is, for example, the conference is about business, for example, or the conference is about the environment, or the conference is about uh, the refugees, um, uh, or, or, or uh, politics, uh, the conference is about the UN, um, the conference is about uh, Libya, or whatever. So banking I, uh, sector, the banking sector, for instance. Yeah, I mean, which, whichever, whichever topic, whichever topic it is, uh, you, as uh, interpreter, you prepare yourself beforehand. You appear to be that you are encyclopedic in, in, your, uh, in your way you are conducting yourself, but really it's not the case. It's a matter of how much you prepared beforehand. I remember I did one um, a couple of years back on uh, blockchain and uh, uh, technical a AI, artificial uh, intelligence and so on. And I went and prepared a lot of terminology there, and I prepared quite a few. I read quite a few articles in in both in both languages. And when I went there, and and, and the, the speaker is not going to go talk about uh, something that is, let's say, uh, outside this topic, uh, which is uh, what was the topic about blockchain. So um, I'm expecting. I'm anticipate. This is part of the anticip. This helps a lot in the anticipating or anticipation uh, part of uh, what the interpreter is doing. Um, of course, the anticipation in, um, in, um, uh, in subtitling is not the same uh, in that, uh, I mean, there, is, there are some softwares which they pick up the word, you write only a few words and a few letters and the, and the, and the word appears on the screen straight away immediately for live subtitling. And that's in itself, 
it requires three, four people to do it, to do live interpreting. And it's not anticipation as much. Now, anticipation can be based a little bit on collocations. Like, for example, if he's going to say in Arabic, and he stopped, you know what to, what, what, to, what to expect next. So you anticipate that. You anticipate um, he's going to talk about, um, if you are in the UN, you are ex expecting, uh, uh, for example, uh, a certain resolution, uh, the number of the resolution, what the resolution is about. If it's 2254, you know that's about Lebanon or Syria or whatever. So I mean, this is the kind of knowledge or, that you need to have to be armed with. You need to have that with you before you go into that. Now, in subtitling, in dubbing, you need to do research the same way you do research for any other translation that you do. When you come across a term, you don't know what it is, DNA, for example, or any other um, uh, term in, uh, in a scientific term, you need to go and search it like any other, um, uh, any other text that you come across. Uh, but the, the difference, uh, in a way, from interpreting is that uh, the text type is different. The text type can be formal and spoken English, um, uh, mixed together, or legal plus spoken. Um, a good example is, um, what's his name, uh, in, in, in uh, The Rain Man, for example, the film, where his brother is uh, mentally retarded. Um, so when he was talking to the doctor, the doctor is telling him some terminology uh, which is used in the, in, the, in the medical field. So that is a kind of... I think you mean, I think you mean the rain man? The rain man, the, yes. Uh, rain. Yes, yes, the rain man. And, 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 and then there is the also man. the... Tom Cruise uh, and Dustin Hoffman. Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, that's it, yes. Uh, when when um, he was talking to the lawyer, the lawyer was using his uh, law language, the law, the, uh, you know, the, the legal language. So uh, about contracts, about uh, heritage and so on, uh, inheritance rather. Um, so all of these um, uh, two, three different types of texts are used um, in, 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 this, uh, uh, in this film. So I mean, films can have more than one type. Now in, in, in uh, interpreting, you could have that as well expected, anticipated to an extent, um, uh, the two different types of text uh, text types. Um, like uh, I remember, I was interpreting uh, for um, uh, a conference, and there was a, uh, uh, there was an imam or or somebody religious uh, uh, leader, and he was going to speak in the conference. Um, I expected him to do some uh, Quranic verses that he's going to be doing that. And while I was interpreting, he did actually use some of them. Now, I had to uh, preempt that, and I, had, I met him beforehand, before the conference uh, paper that he was going to give, and I asked him what are the texts that he's using in the, the Quranic texts, and he told me, and I went and prepared them beforehand, and I put them next to me um, uh, for, for me to be aware of what they are about and in order to interpret them very quickly. Uh, because it's quite a, a, a minefield if you want to interpret them correctly. And I have noticed also the audience themselves, when, when he started to use these Quranic verses, they, a number of them started to put their headphones on, only when he was talking about these particular verses. So you see this kind of, it's just a little bit of anticipation I could call, um, which, which um, uh, I have managed to expect and, and anticipate and did that. Thank but there are other anticipations you. with regards to the topic. It's Thank you, here. Professor Ahmed, for these Most nice welcome. remarks and comments. Thank you. And Thank you. thanks for accepting the invitation. Thank to you very much indeed. I am, I am so honored to, to, to hear you and I'd be more than happy to answer um, uh, more of your, any of your questions. Um, whether it's about interpreting or, or, I mean, I'm talking about interpreting. I know anticipation is a, is a, there's, a there's a book um, about anticipation and uh, simultaneous inter uh, interpreting, uh, Benjamin, by Benjamin Lyons. Okay, thank you very much, yeah. Dr. Khodorov, for this.
for this really uh, uh, sufficient answer. And uh, I think I kept Mushtaq waiting <laughs> for a long time. Sure. So let's have this question. Yes, Mushtaq, go ahead. Yes, Mushtaq, we are waiting for your question. Are you there? Maybe his mic is not uh, on, or maybe he's. It's it's on. It's on. Uh, I can see. Maybe it. his audio. No, maybe his audio is. Okay, let's go to Jalil. Jalil, do you hear us? Yes, yes, doctor. Yes, Jenny, go ahead. Yes. Until, yes. until, uh, thank uh, you. Until Mushtaq fixes his uh, problem. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Khadro, for uh, your valuable uh, presentation and information about audiovisual and uh, translation theories. And uh, uh, thank you for, for this opportunity. So, my question is. Uh, so you are a specialist in audiovisual. So my question is, what are the recent areas in, in audiovisual in general and in subtitling in particular uh, that need to be investigated and that can be considered and that can be considered as good or uh, suggested topics for a PhD uh, dissertation. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> now, of course, um, you're talking about research gaps that are, um, uh, that are, um, and there are quite a lot of them. Uh, I would say, um, uh, with regard to research gaps, you can go for intralinear um, uh, magazine or journal intra-linear um, uh, journal. It's an academic journal published or uh, 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 edited by uh, some scholars in uh, Bologna uh, University in, in uh, Italy. Um, uh, I remember there is, um, if uh, I can actually uh, give you uh, the title of something building something or other. Just let me give me uh, let, give me one second, and I will try to see if I can find the article that's published. Uh, uh, it is about uh, lots of gaps in 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 uh, in uh, subtitling for the deaf and hard of hearing. Of course. Uh, in terms of uh, gaps or research areas, recent. Um, there are lots of, um, I mean, for example, eye movement, uh, there's a, not much going on about that. There's lots about dubbing, there's not much on dubbing um, uh, into Arabic, uh, uh, whether it's dubbing into, there's multilingualism uh, in films, when you have a film that is consisting more than uh, one, more than two or three languages in the film. Uh, with the English being the primary or the main uh, language, and there are three, four, five languages as well. So multilingualism, um, biculturalism, um, uh, this is one area. Um, uh, there is, um, I mean, it, it, it depends on what is your main interest, if it's in subtitling or in uh, dubbing. Um, there is voice overing. Uh, I have recently reviewed a paper on uh, some students, master students, who did uh, voiceovers, and it was as they assessed them uh, for the quality of their translation or for the recordings of their voices, um, the quality of their proje projection, um, very much uh, similar to interpreting because dubbing and interpreting are close in terms of the because you have the audio being the end product. Uh, so you can assess that uh, assessment of quality assessment of um, um, the um, AVT. Um, uh, I would say 
um, you need to go for main journals and search for 2020, okay, 2021, and put that and search uh, in that database, and you'll find many, literally many. And I'll, I'll be more than happy to send you only for SDH. I have found like 15 or 20 gaps that needs, they need a lot of research, a lot. And that is only for the deaf and hard of hearing. And if you want to deal for only for the deaf, or only for the hard of hearing, not the deaf. And according to the UN, they are split into four different groups. So, um, and what what the what uh, where where does the country stand? Your country stand with regards to implementing the rights for the deaf people or for the blind? Um, audio description also just as important. Uh, subfield in audiovisual translation. So it depends on the subfield as well. Um, in dubbing, if you are going to, you need to be more focused, uh, narrow down your topic first. I mean, when you said about uh, recent areas, you need to narrow down the title of your topic. First of all, is it going to be in subtitling or in dubbing? Secondly, if it's in dubbing, are you talking about lip syncing? Are you talking about voiceovering? Are you talking about sound biting? Um, uh, narration, commentary. Are you talking about documentaries that you are analyzing? Or films, feature films, or TV series? Which ones are you analyzing um, in, your, in your study? So all of these are elements that are important to decide upon before you can say, uh, what, what, where to go from there with regards to that particular topic. Going to subtitling, again, um, uh, not only the, the film itself that you choose, but how you're going to analyze that film based on what? Text linguistics, uh, based on translation and culture, culture turn, ideology and translation. So certain ideology is influencing the way you present something. Example of ideology can be, for example, um, uh, IS, IDS, Israeli Defense uh, Forces, IDF, uh, Israeli Defense Forces. If you are translating that into Arabic, would you say Jish Israeli? Well, what uh, define Israeli? Yeah, if you're talking about a very hot topic at the moment. So uh, choosing even the, the, the actual what's what's called decision making here for the for the for, for which word to go for is dictated by or controlled by uh, because you've got outside control and inside control. Uh, outside control is the institution itself, uh, is the political group, is the religious group, uh, whoever, and inside um, influence which is the actual translator. Uh, the translator can actually, himself or herself, can actually decide on certain words to choose, um, whether to call them insurgents, okay, which is mutamarridin, or we call them uh, martyrs, mustashidin, mustashadiyin, or we call them intihariyin, suicide bombers, or whatever you want to call it. So that is really, uh, uh, very interesting to go through the uh, translation and politics or subtitling and political uh, and, and, and political translate political subtitling. So it, it is it is extremely varied, extremely uh, difficult to um, give you just one, two, three examples. I'd be more than happy to send you um, an already uh, file which I have on gaps for only for only SDH. And it is like three, four, very, uh, it is like 10 or 15 gaps there, uh, highlighted by one of the scholars in, um, in intra linear uh, journal. There are other journals that are interested, like New Voices in, in audiovisual, which you can uh, go and search. The translator, you can actually, uh, as a journal, you can find out the target um, as a journal and see what are the latest uh, articles written about audiovisual, read that article, 
And then from that, you branch out and decide what you want to do next. Uh, because you thank, you, thank, thank you very much, Dr. Um, Ahmed, for this detailed answer. Now we go to Mushtaq. Uh, I think thank you, Dr. Can you hear so me? Yes, yes. yes. Yes, we thank can. you. Sorry, yes, for, sorry for the technical problem. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Professor Beida for giving us this opportunity to be in touch with one of the uh, figures in the field of translation and ABT, uh, dear much. Professor Khudro. Uh, dear Professor, in your book, uh, which is Linguistic Issues and Quality Assessment of English Arabic Audiovisual Translation, mm -hmm. and which is also a valuable resource uh, in this course uh, of our study, uh, you have tackled the issue of uh, semantic lexical issues, for example, the polysemy and uh, register and other issues. My question, can we apply the practical functional approach to quality assessment that you did in the case of Boca Antos in 2016? Can we apply this translation quality assessment to the translation of pun in comic sitcoms? Thank you very much. Wow. Ah, you're talking. Okay, you see, you're talking about a genre, which is humor, okay, uh, which is, um, there is, uh, actually, you can search for this. Uh, uh, it is about dubbing. I have supervised a, a master's uh, thesis in 2016, 2017 on humor, because you're talking about humor here. And humor itself is quite, um, uh, you need to look at how to make humor, how to make a joke, because puns play on words. Playing on words here uh, is, is, is the issue. And play on words is quite a very tricky uh, topic to um, use because it's very much language specific um, most of the time. And these, uh, are difficult to actually produce in another language. Um, uh, in a, you, you need to go for the functional equivalence, definitely, to be able to reach the same kind of area. Now, I'll give you an example of a tongue twister, for example. I mean, if, they are, if you're translating a tongue, twist, tongue twister, um, she sells seashells on the seashore. Now, how would you say that in Arabic? You can't say, just say in Arabic, to be al asdaf ala shati al bahr or fi shati al bahr Because there's no, uh, if, if somebody said to the other guy, can you please say, she says seashells on the seashore. It's going to be very difficult to understand your target audience. Will they understand what you're doing there? They would not. Then functional equivalence, is the answer. Uh, now, functional equivalence, of course, you can say, uh, can you say, for example? Or can you say, and, and that has actually created something of a tongue twister. Of course, you don't have to use the same tongue twisters I'm using here, but that's the dynamic equivalence, which is to uh, give the same message okay, to your recipient. The message is a tongue twister. And you are giving that tongue twister there. A pun is also, uh, it's a play on words here. Uh, you are trying to, reminds me actually what uh, one of the uh, master students did a, a, the uh, a thesis on Shafi'i poetry. And he talked, he plays with the word tibr or turb. Turab and Tibr, which is playing on the same word, but he's reversed some of the order of the letters in the word. Now, how can you do that in another language? These are related to the embellishments of Arabic and what Abdul Rauf Hussein has, has done in his book, uh, 2006, where he talked about that it is, uh, he talked about them and how difficult it is to actually uh, use alliteration uh, in the same way that they are using, whether it's in Arabic and English, or from English to Arabic, or Arabic to English. How would you do that in the other language? Now, that is to do with uh, poetic um, uh, poetics, 
uh, and, and these poetics remind me of Lefebvre and, and how uh, in his uh, chapter on uh, uh, called A Case of Missing Al Qasida uh, in his book in 1991. Uh, where, where he saw that poetics cannot be translated or was missed uh, by the translators and he was criticizing some of them and he was apologetic in others uh, in the choice of words, in the choice of uh, this, this uh, meter and, uh, and all of these uh, uh, stylistic uh, elements or devices that are used. So here it's quite tricky. Uh, I would say go for an equivalent um, uh, uh, that is in the target uh, functional equivalence uh, that serves the same function, that makes people laugh. It reminds me actually about making people laugh uh, with the interpreter. He was actually interpreting for the Prime Minister of Denmark, I believe. Or was, it, was it Denmark or one of the Scandinavian uh, Prime Ministers? And uh, the, while he was interpreting for him, the prime minister <laughs> started to speak about the joke, okay? But the interpreter, because he's, he knows that he's focusing on the topic, so he wasn't sure what, this, what the prime minister is trying to say here. So he waited until we, he, he gets the, the gist of what's happening with this prime minister. What is he talking about here? It turns out that he's saying a joke. But it, it took him like one or two sentences for the interpreter to realize it's a joke. So what did he do? He couldn't translate the joke, the joke in the time that he's got because of the time is passing. The same way as in the audiovisual, where the time passes and you need to cover the time. You need to fill in the gap. So what he did, he says, the prime minister has said the joke, please laugh. And everybody laughed. Everybody laughed. So the humor is being passed on from the prime minister. The prime minister thought they understood, he, they understood the joke and, 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 and the audience knew that it was a joke and the, 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 uh, the interpreter managed to do that within a short period of time. So, I mean, this kind of element of humor and comedy, um, like Madrista Michel uh, subtitled, for example, which is one of the studies that one of my students actually doing, and I'm examining them, uh, her uh, next week. Um, then it is humor, it's difficult. Humor and puns, uh, is, is, it's got some, some element of humor in it. And sitcom is also, I mean, stand-up comedy is just as important. How to make a joke, the punchline, the set, you set uh, the, 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 the uh, situation and then give the punchline either at the beginning or at the end. It's very, very tricky indeed. But functional events will be the best one with a humorous element <laughs> if you can. Yes, I think this is a very thorny area of translation. It's really, really much more difficult than one would think when one enters such a field. And um, commenting on the situation of the interpreter who told the audience that the prime minister said a joke, so please laugh. I think it's a risky solution. I myself wouldn't have resorted to such a solution in case I'm put in the same situation, right? Dr. Khodro, would sure, you recommend? Sure, sure. No, I mean, it's not the matter of recommending that, uh, what, what he's done. Uh, the idea I think, is... I think he was is, lucky enough to he was, have he was lucky a clever enough. But you audience. See, no, but you see, I mean, I'll give you another example of a different type, which, which uh, is also another tricky situation. Um, a Russian interpreter uh, was interpreting and, and uh, the, uh, the speaker said something about throwing the, the baby with the bath water, uh, which is an expression used in English uh, to throw the whole thing out uh, or get rid of it completely. And she refused yes. to even interpret that piece. You know, this is yet mm. another element. But you need to hear it's, it's, uh, it's a decision making on the spot. Um, you need to be able to do it. Um, I mean, it's not a matter of uh, whether he's right or not. It's just the fact that he's trying to pass a message across. Um, uh, no matter what the joke was, 
I mean, I'm not justifying what he's done, yes. but what I'm saying is it's the same situation. Now, another case is in um, uh, Qatar, uh, the Emir of Qatar was, was at what time, His Excellency, at the time, and it was in a press conference, and one of the uh, 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 people uh, there started swearing at him uh, in front of all these press people, uh, and the interpreter has to say something in, 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 uh, in, to, to, to explain what, what this person is saying as a question or a comment, or what is it? So mm -hmm. this is another element. Another element you go for, uh, and he says, uh, So there is another element of um, uh, George Bush when, he, when one of the guys had thrown uh, some uh, shoes at him, um, and this is gestures being done, or, or, or facial expression, or extra linguistic elements, uh, the image uh, contributing. And he says, you dog, and he, he, mean, he meant you animal. So uh, there is a quite a, a tricky choice of words that you need to go for uh, to give the same effect, because the word animal and dog are quite different. Animal yes. is more, more, more vicious than a dog in the target culture. So that's that's the okay. Thing. And you know, you can see that, that George Bush at the time, uh, I think the son, he, he, he looked at the shoe and says, it's size 10, ha, ha, ha. So he's laughed at it and <laughs> yes. consider it to be a, an insult. Yet, yet it is an insult in the Arab culture, but not in the English culture. So you are talking about subtitling something like this. I mean, also another subtitle for Michael Jackson, I remember. Uh, and he says, this is it. When I mean that this is it, I mean this is it. So it was actually the title of his concert. It's called This Is It. And he says, I mean by this yes. is it, this is the last um, last uh, job that I will be doing before I retire. Mm -hmm. And he actually died afterwards. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, how can you translate this is it? Because that is also, it has two meanings to it. It's a, it, it has two different um, uh, 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 you know, uh, translations to it. So uh, there is always a case of um, the implicature, um, explicature, um, uh, the, uh, because you're talking about uh, uh, um, uh, drum, uh, uh, pragmatics here, and and um, and uh, audiovisual uh, translation is very close to pragmatics in terms of conversation because it's a communication. Yes, act and this well. and this reflects this reflects the heaviness of the responsibilities put on the shoulders of translators in general and interpreters in particular especially that most people think that it's just a matter of language, it's just a matter of mastering two languages or more, uh, which is not the case, which no, is not, not the case in reality, yes. It's uh, not so the case let because me know Snell, Snell Hornby said that, uh, that, that uh, when you are translating, you are a bilingual and bicultural. You have to be, you must be by, by uh, this is both 1988. She, she, she said that. So bilingual and bicultural. And these are yes. two that are for subtitles just as much as any other translator. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Fadra. Let's now go to Abdesattar. Let's uh, try to be brief because we have other students waiting for their turn sure, to ask. Sure. Yes, well, Abdesattar, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Dr. Many thank thanks to Dr. Khidro and to Dr. Beida for this chance to express the opinion. Uh, doctor, uh, in your book, The Linguistic Issues, uh, also talk about a, a golden ro rule, yes. uh, stating that the less the better yes. in, in subtitling. Yes. I think this rule can be activated more and more if the audience we address well acquainted with the text and the discussion. How can we apply this if the linguistic unit is very long and obligatory at the same time? Yes. And how the, can we make at the same time the second part of the question, of the same question, and how can one make use of the latest technology? Can one activate the latest technology in this respect? Thank you. Okay. Um, now about the, the rule of the less the lesser the better. Um, it is, um, um, there are lots of mannerisms that are used in subtitling. For example, hey man, uh, uh, watch out man, 
I, I can't see you, man. Where are you, man? And sometimes this word man is referring to a woman, uh, believe it or not. So the mannerisms um, can be dropped, um, uh, especially as they are not uh, needed. And, and, and also, I mean, less uh, the better, for example, if he says, no, 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 10 times, or three, five times, six times. Do you need to say that five times, six times? Uh, three will be more and more than enough to show that it is the same. Uh, so a repetition could be one of the elements with the reduction of the linguistic unit. Now, I'm just going to actually pause on the word linguistic unit that you mentioned here, because I think it is uh, the uh, unit of translation that we are talking about, deciding on what the unit of translation is. Um, and as you know, um, uh, scholars talk about uh, the word or the phrase or the clause or the sentence or the paragraph or the page or the book or the volume. All of them are texts and all of them can be considered as unit of translation. And it is quite a well-known um, uh, term uh, or uh, a well-known expression used in uh, translation studies. Now, it is um, obligatory, shall we say, for you to summarize, to condense, to reduce the, uh, that linguistic, what you call linguistic unit, uh, the long linguistic unit, to its, um, to its bare bones, basically, to make it as as, as uh, easy to understand. However, uh, it carries a lot of information in it, uh, yet very short. Um, this is where the skill of the subtitler comes in. And it's not easy, it's not gonna come uh, like in, a, in, a, in, in, in one year. This could take quite a few years for one subtitler to handle and be able to, uh, be, uh, uh, to produce such kind of short text um, for subtitling. Now, it is very similar to consecutive in a way, because in consecutive, you find somebody who speaks like for one minute, and when you are uh, trying to say what they said, you don't speak for one minute. You don't give the same amount of information they have given in one minute. You look for the main concepts, and you try to um, uh, using your discretion as to what is minor or, or un, un, secondary information and what is primary information that you need to know about. For example, uh, uh, an airplane crashing and killing few people, um, people will not be interested to know the color of that airplane or, or, or um, where it was heading so much as there's a crash somewhere um, uh, and people died. So there is a kind of, this is, um, this is about the reduction in uh, interpreting, which can be also used for uh, subtitling due to the um, duration element, the restriction of time, and also the restriction of space, the screen. So due to these two uh, highly, uh, I would say, suffocating um, uh, uh, constraints, uh, it makes you really sit down and think, how can I make this sentence shorter? How can I make it shorter, but I can make the audience understand what he's trying to say? That is the gist of, or that is the main target. That is your main objective. Uh, with regards to the latest technology, it is helpful, the te latest technology in voice recognition, it, in, in identifying when the dialogue starts where it ends. Um, there are lots of softwares that are being done here, and that helps a lot in, in time queuing, and time queuing takes time in subtitling, for example, or in knowing the duration of uh, one sentence. How long is this? Seven seconds? I have to make sure that I can read it in seven seconds when I translated it. When I trans the, the TT has to be seven seconds read, to be read in seven seconds. If it's not read in seven seconds, I'm sorry, your dubbed version of that English, the Arabic version, is to be thrown out of the loop. So technology does actually help.
latest technology. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Yes, uh, Ranin. Ranin. Hello, Ranin. Yes, Dr. Abeda, where are you? It's okay, I can, I can take the hand uh, if, if need be, uh, Dr. Mahdi. I don't know, I mean, if you want, because I don't yes, know. Victor, I think there is some, something wrong with Victor Abeda concerning the, uh, concerning technical issues. Ah, okay, okay. She's, she's, uh, yes. Especially power interruption is something frequent in Iraq. Oh dear, I'm sorry to hear that. It's not, it's, um, it's becoming like it's the, uh, the norm. It's the norm. Uh, it's uh, out of norm. my personal experience in, uh, in simultaneous or uh, interpretation. Mm -hmm. In fact, I received once upon time, I was assigned the responsibility of translating for the banking sector. Yes. A session in banking sector. Yes. Uh, when I received a two-page briefing about the, the, the sessions that will be held, the basic terminology needed, clear, my task was an easy one to carry out. Yes. I like Unlike when I was assigned the responsibility of translating a political text all of a sudden, without a prior, uh, let us say, information. This you shouldn't task, accept it, yeah, Doctor. Doctor, uh, you shouldn't because, accept any jobs that are, um, you know, is, on the spot. It is you a free of do charge, uh, Doctor. It is a free of charge, and I was <laughs> assigned this responsibility when I was a chair of the department before uh, ten years ago. Mm. So yeah. I came, I f find many uh, uh, TV satellite channels working there in the room, and the room was full of audience, and I take the responsibility and did some sort of consecutive interpretation. Yes. I started to, uh, to do some sort of note-taking, yes. and I was highly successful with the yes, testimony sure. of the people sitting there. Yeah, yeah, wonderful, wonderful. So such a task, the idea I, I want to raise, this is such a task of whether consecutive or simultaneous interpretation, unless the interpreter is provided with, let us say, a two-page, I say, a two-page briefing about the translation event, I think uh, he, as, as you mentioned... He should not he accept, should, should not accept. Yeah, he should there not are, accept it, or he should not involve different. himself, he should not no. involve himself in such a translation act. Uh, doctor, it's 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 um, they respect you more when they know that you are not um, someone you can just hold by the hand and just come in and say, "Come and interpret for us straight away." It's not. It's not. Um, uh, you have a switch in your head between the two languages, uh, but but, if, but the amount of vocabulary, the amount of terminology used. Is, is extremely, extremely important. Now, there is one thing about the business. Can you turn on the microphone? Okay. I am alone in my study room. Okay, that's fair. Now, um, I remember I had uh, interpreted for uh, in business and it was about banking, and it was about um, transfer, uh, what's called uh, the system called SWIFT. And SWIFT is, 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 um, uh, is a system used in Brussels for any kind of money transfer by any country, from any country to any country. And it means, it means uh, transferring inter, interbank, international, um, uh, it's, a, it's a very, it's a very, it's an expression, it's an acronym. And this acronym, I had to prepare it before. I do not accept, I would say, to any of your students doing interpreting, do not accept any job in interpreting without going and preparing 
I'm not wanting to brief. You are being very modest, Dr. Mahdi. I, I, I wouldn't say that. I would say you need two to three days before the event to be able to interpret. You can interpret conversational kind of talk. Yes, no problem. But when it comes to conference or because this is a prepared uh, speeches and prepared speeches, uh, they are usually condensed in terms of the uh, uh, information. If somebody is talking without a prepared uh, script, it's very easy for you to interpret because they are speaking from the top of their heads, whatever comes to their head. But if you are doing that for a conference, uh, it is quite uh, demanding and you're not supposed to do it more than 15 minutes. Um, that's what it is. Now, in the UN, they sorry for give the right to this. Sorry for interruption, Dr. Ahmed. Would sorry. you allow Dr. Baida to enter the... Sorry. Yes, I don't know how I did. I did allow her. Um, uh, do I know how to do that? I will, I will try to see if I know how to... Uh, reactions. Where is it? How do you allow... Where, where is it? Under what uh, chat is it? Participants, maybe. Participants, yes. participants. Uh, there's nobody uh, uh, in the waiting room, perhaps, you meant. Uh, I can't see invite. Uh, no, I can't see any, any way of seeing her in the, in the, in the waiting room. I can see only the participants. Thank you so much, Doctor. I'll tell her. I will try to see. I might actually find a way. One second. I might find a way. <coughs> security, perhaps, under security. Uh, enable lock meeting, screen chats. She's actually, the net service has been disconnected. She's connected, disconnected her. Enable waiting room. Yes, it's already. So she's actually disconnected. Thank you. Uh, Thank yeah, you. yeah. I am back now and trying to resume. She's trying to resume. Yes. Okay. Yes. Any other? Any other? Uh, I saw uh, a Ranin. Perhaps. Well, Abdul Sattar, he, he has already raised a question and you have answered. Him. Yes. Yes, Abdul. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I, I raised a question. Excuse me, Professor. Then you have answered under the name Ranin. Thanks a lot. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. I, okay. Thanks. I understand. Thank you. Okay. Uh, no one has Mr. any question. Mr. Isam is is is. Um, Isam, yes. do you have a question to raise? Isam Muhammad, yeah. Thank you very much, Victor, for being here with us. Uh, with, thank, you. Uh, thank you for your nice presentation. Uh, no problem. Doctor, I have a question. Uh, uh, this question is of two parts, uh, by the way. Sure, sure. Uh, it is related to the pragmatic meaning of the visual element of the uh, audiovisual message. Uh, to which extent, Doctor, the uh, visual element uh, of the audiovisual message, uh, uh, to which extent the, the visual element um, is important to convey the, uh, the intended meaning of the source, uh, source text? Yes. And how, how, how this, uh, uh, this uh, element uh, uh, affects the inference of uh, the readership to, to reach the intended meaning? Uh, the second part of uh, my question is uh, also related to the, uh, the individual elements. Uh, do you think that, Doctor, as you said, uh, we have a readership and we have different kinds of readerships uh, according to their uh, knowledge, according viewership, to their... Viewership, yes. Uh, yeah. Viewership, so yes. Viewership, that, yes. So that if we do translation for uh, audiovisual text into, uh, for example, Arabic language, do you think yes. that we can have two... Uh, uh, visual elements, uh, one related to those people who, let us say, lay people, and uh, one uh, related to professional people. So we can have, uh, can we have two types of uh, uh, visual elements w w of the same source text? Uh, when you say visual elements, I mean, what do you mean by visual elements? I mean, the, the, for example, the background, the picture, the pictures, for example. Yes, so, uh, the usually you don't do that. I mean, this is what you don't change. You, you, yeah, there, there, this the editor who does the technical side. They can all they can edit down or edit out uh, some uh, visual uh, visuals that are unacceptable, perhaps. Perhaps um, they can edit them out, but you are not uh, entitled to do that yourself. 
uh, this is a kind of censorship. Um, now, um, let me just go back to. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I had to go out because of the internet service. It disconnected me. Now, yes, yes, I'm back. So forgive Welcome my back. absence Welcome for back. the last Welcome back. ten minutes. Okay. Thank you. Really Thank you. It. Okay. Now, uh, to answer your question, I mean, when you say visual element. Uh, I said that earlier about Rimael and the Ascentus and Orero, 2007. There is an overlap between uh, the sound, the image, and the text. These three together can actually produce the message. The message is not based on only the text itself, but more than that. An example, an exophora, for example, if he says, here is this, if he says, here is this. Now, of course, you need to know what this is. What is he talking about? The image can show you it's a pen, okay? Or it's a lighter or a cigarette. Now he says, here is this, or here it is. If you don't see the image, you are not going to be able to know what this is, and if it's masculine or feminine, gender-wise. So you need to say "hadhi," "ulla hada." And if it's not a pen, you say "hada." If it's not a kadaha or 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 kibri, albut kibri, then "hadhi." So even you are you are linked, you are you are bound by the image. The image actually gives you the context, in a way similar to what. The drama text, the theater text does when you know where they are, where they are, where, where the actual scene is. So the situation where you are is extremely important. The image is extremely important to pass the message across um, uh, pragmatically, perhaps sometimes. Um, so that's, uh, that's the intended meaning, um, which can be, as I said, uh, double entendre, if it is, uh, it's got double meaning to it, uh, then you can, the image helps in that. Now, editing it down uh, for the layman and not for the professionals, uh, you don't need to do that. You need, if you, uh, usually a company's corporate uh, videos or uh, corporate uh, productions, they tend to give you two videos. One for the specialists, the professionals, and another for the layman. The people who are uh, the everyday, the ordinary people who are watching this video. Like I am in the, in the hospital watching, for example, uh, the, on the screen, it can be advertising for teeth and uh, how to make your teeth nice and so on, uh, subtitles. Now, that is, this video is addressing certain group of people. Um, so the audience, you know which audience, they tell you which audience. And you can ask the client to tell you this information. Very important information that you need to do in order to reach the intended meaning or the intended message of the audiovisual here. Um, so it reaches the audience via two or three elements via the sound, because they can hear, via the image, they can see what's happening, and also via the actual words, the verbal element here that's being used. So there are three elements that are combined together, which help a lot in the condensation, in the reduction, in the shortening of your subtitles to make it shorter uh, with regards to that. Viewership, um, viewership as, as I said, you need to know that from your client to decide which, okay. which text to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. I think this is clear enough. And finally, um, we are going to um, yeah, the, last the last question, yes, from Ibrahim. Ibrahim, go ahead. Let's make use of these, sure. these last minutes. They are dedicated to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Baida, for organizing this lecture. Thank you so much, Dr. Ahmed Khudro, for thank this you. remarkable uh, lecture. In fact, I have two questions. My first question is, what are the most suitable strategies used in subtitling war movies from English into Arabic? 
And number two, will multimodality be compromised in subtitling? And what are the answers for such problem? Thank you so much again. Okay, thank you very much. I would like to know what you mean by modality. Are you talking about modality as in audio? Um, yes. Uh, yes. It is audio to audio, audio to written. Is that I, what you I, mean? I, I, multimodality, I mean the audio, the image, and the text will be transferred into condensed yes. mode, which is written in subtitles. Yes, 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 okay. Because, I mean, as you know, modality can be called for modal, modal verbs. And yes. modality in that one, how to translate modal verbs. That's completely thank different. You, no. uh, Area. Yeah, yes, um, with regards to your um, question um, about strategies, translation strategies. Um, now, I need to point out to um, one thing before I talk about war, war movies. Strategies. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, I'm, because I'm uh, some interference in my, I can hear. So, uh, yeah, so he's he's talking. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, uh, to answer you, Ibrahim, there's two things you need to, uh, I need to clarify first about strategies. And many students uh, confuse strategies with uh, procedures uh, because they are different. Uh, strategies are applied to text as a whole, okay? Uh, whereas procedures are localized. You are treating uh, like you are when you're uh, local treatment to a specific area on the skin. Um, so procedures are localized, um, treating certain elements uh, in the text um, with, with regards to a certain uh, collocation or a certain term, uh, for instance. So that is, we need, you need to differentiate between the two. Now, strategies like foreignizing and domestication. Yes, that's uh, right. Um, uh, um, whereas procedures, are um, related to uh, literal translation, calc, and uh, transcription or transference, as uh, Catford calls it. Um, so, um, uh, uh, and there is also modulation, reformulation, adaptation, equivalence, blah, blah. This is only to Vinay and Lardinet. Uh, these are procedures, but under two main uh, strategies according to them, which are direct translation and oblique translation. So that's, I want to actually clarify this point about strategies. So what you are saying is about the strategies with regards to the whole film. Um, now, this depends on, again, the patronage, who is uh, paying you the money, basically, who is, um, dictating you how to translate certain things in a certain way, whether they are names, whether they are uh, expressions and that. For example, like for example, uh, in the night, in the night garden, which is a children's program, which is an English uh, children's program about children when they go to bed. Now, if we translate it in the night garden, في حديقة الليل, of course, the implication of that, the overtones of it, is completely different to what it is uh, for, uh, for children. Ch for children, it will be like uh, they expect it, it's the, it's the time to go to bed. It's time to go to bed. That's what it means, really. Uh, but not any other um, adult kind of um, uh, interpretation, shall we say. Uh, it was translated and dubbed as this is, I'm talking about the title. Now, Hadiqat al Marah gives the same effect, shall we say, to my audience who are children. They know that it is um, for children and children is going to bed. Now, I'm not saying it's accurate or how closely accurate it is to the uh, message itself, because you've got the uh, meaning here or, or you've got the core 
uh, uh, intended meaning you know the words that go around uh, the actual meaning coming closer and further away from the center okay so i mean that's the problem of which word i should choose that gives me the same kind of meaning that i need which one is better you know i mean should i choose the word uh, park or garden what's the difference between them one of them is public the other one is private um, uh, uh, garden is for a house a park is for and if uh, for, for for a public park and and also if i'm choosing the word beautiful and the word pretty pretty means the surface uh, and beautiful means the inside of the person um, uh, so it, it depends on which one i am choosing here yeah, uh, to to give the same effect or the same meaning and the same intended meaning uh, uh, with regards to that so that is really uh, the word choice uh, to reflect that which one I should choose from the word house or the word home the word home is more emotional more linked to your family uh, that's the way uh, Palestinians would call it dar dar now darko meaning your family and my family and not actually the actual house uh, itself. It has emotional element attached to it, the word home, to compare to the house. So you see, with regards to war movies, now if they are using the word insurgents, would you call them Mutamardin rebels? Or would you call them Thoriyin, or Thuwar? Yeah, it has a different implication for the listener, the person who's watching. Um, so if you call them rebels and they call them to war, then you get another person in the discussion, let's say, or in the documentary about war movie, okay, who are using the word um, suicide bombers and not rebels, okay, or they calling them insurgents or they calling them um, troublemakers or for talking. So it depends on their perspective the perspective of the text producer the t the st of the original what's their perspective you are presenting their perspective and it's based on that that you are going to choose your wording in that now as i said about Egyptian israeli or what the defined israeli if i am addressing uh, those who are Jews or Israelis, they don't know a Jewishian an Israeli. They know what the fact Israeli. This is their perspective. But if you are presenting that perspective in an Arabic channel, then they're gonna be worried about it. I would say, what do you mean what the Defa Israeli? So you see who is the, 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 the text producer. You need to know the ideology, the, the agenda, the political agenda that's behind that film because that's a historical film war movie and that is presented in a certain way uh, from a perspective from, from a certain perspective you need to keep to that perspective unless you're going to go and domesticate it okay and make it gentle and break it gently to your audience euphemistically and bodlerize what's called bodlerize making it uh, less offensive, shall we say, less shocking, less, um, uh, uh, you would not shock your audience to the extent they don't want to watch it anymore. Um, uh, this depends on um, the purpose of your uh, subtitling of that film and the purpose of the commissioner, the person who commissioned you to subtitle that film, whether it's a religious film or political film or any, um, you know, uh, 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 any group who is actually asking you to do this kind of uh, subtitling for them. So it depends on that. In terms of modality, I forgot what you said about modality, but uh, in modality, there is two uh, elements in multimodality. Sometimes the film is dubbed and subtitled, okay, multimodality. Um, uh, and uh, because of that, um, they want you to be using one, one certain mode, which is subtitle written. Now here, of course, reading takes longer than speaking. 
yeah, for the original text and the original text, but it doesn't do the, so uh, when you are um, when you are dubbing it, because that's why um, like Turkish uh, TV series or, or uh, Mexican TV series or now very common um, uh, Korean uh, TV series are very popular, by the way, uh, among uh, young people nowadays. Uh, pop, pop music and uh, the subtitle quite a lot of that and I have actually seen of them. So uh, it is, uh, you are uh, bound by certain constraints uh, based on the modality you go for. If you go for the modality of dubbing, that means you have to produce it audio, uh, audio text, which means you have to tashkil it, kattale, diacritics, tashkil, that duration wise, uh, fits well within the limit of the duration of that particular sentence, whether the um, uh, individual is facing the camera or uh, his back to the camera uh, plays a part in, in, in the dubbing uh, part. So all of these um, will play um, into the duration of recording that piece uh, audio uh, in audio because you are producing it all audio. Um, if it is a, a mixed one, shall we say, uh, subtitled and, and uh, uh, audio, um, they tell you. Now, a good example for this is um, uh, Dora. In Dora, which is called Fulla in, in Arabic, believe it or not, you see they've changed the name. They have actually the uh, subtitles, the commissioner, the person who commissioned your work, they have actually told you what the names of the characters are because you, they are addressing children. So, Fulla will, 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 Eagle Bigel, and he be in the night garden, in Persian, say the leaf. All of these names have changed based on a strategy that is based on a strategy dictated, okay, the one who, who has the power. Who's got the power? The control factor, the outside control factor, the political group, religious group, the institution, if it's an institution that you are subtitling for. So it depends on them telling you what are the guidelines. Their guidelines you need to follow. Um, in terms of duration, uh, they tell you, for example, six seconds per subtitle. You cannot go further than that. So you need to segment as we call it in interpreting segmentation. We need to break down to segment the actual uh, uh, text uh, accordingly to make each subtitle stand alone on its own without having to be linked in one way or another to the next uh, constituent, which is uh, another uh, verbal phrase or noun phrase or adver adjecti adjectival or adjective phrase, or adverbal phrase. You don't break phrases. And that is your job for not breaking because you can't go back and forth in one subtitle the next unless you've got a DVD copy and you are going back and forth to do that. So you don't have them um, uh, linked together in too closely to the extent that you can't remember what's been said in the previous subtitle. So each subtitle needs to stand alone. So there are ele elements of um, technical elements, so shall we say, or guidelines they are given by the company itself to tell you uh, that the strategies themselves, um, they decide sometimes to tell you, for example, editors religious you can't say they become uh, too uh, narrow-minded in terms of the selection of um, the, the, the actual word choice, you know, um, decision-making, as uh, Dr. Abayda was saying earlier. So they interfere in things like, what is this? Also, what kind of 
uh, what kind of uh, for the other guy who says uh, one of you has said about research uh, recent research you can do research research about dialects how do you translate dialects from uh, let's say Scandinavian from a Scottish to Irish to Canadian to Australian in the same film when you translate them into Arabic how would you do that would you go for Lebanese Iraqi Gulf um, uh, Egyptian, uh, Moroccan, Tunisian, uh, Saudi, uh, which one you're going to go for to choose to which uh, dialect? So there are lots of things to, that, that, that are, are worth uh, investigating and they are all interesting. For a PhD, they are all interesting. They are all important. Multilingualism, uh, modality, as you said, multimodality, um, uh, strategies, which strategy, and is it effective? How effective is this strategy? And foreignizing, if you are foreignizing, is it going to have that kind of shocking element, especially if there is no uh, marginality? Foreignizing without, with marginality has to be uh, giving footnotes, giving uh, some sort of paratext uh, to add to the text. Uh, one of my students is saying in the masters, he says that we have to add uh, enriched text, which is like a hyperlink put in on the, on the same shot. Uh, you press on it, it gives you more information about this particular scene uh, of symbolism, where there is a symbol talking about uh, the symbolism in, in politics, for example, a symbol of having uh, a statue, for example, of somebody. That's a symbol. Uh, what does it mean? Um, a communist or a fascist or uh, a socialist, um, uh, signs uh, or symbols and, and what they mean and so on. So to choosing them according to the symbolism used in the film. So it, it is, it is, it is uh, quite interesting multimodality, uh, but which ones to go for? Would you go for multimodality to multimodality? Or would you go for multimodality to monomodality? This is a choice that is you have to suggest to the person who gave you the job in order to enlighten them as to which modality I should go for. Now, in terms of uh, strategy, which strategy you go for, this is your decision. But at the same time, you need to be aware of my audience. Who is going to watch this film? I have received a film about, um, uh, about a, a factory in Lebanon uh, advertising for some sort of a product, okay, and it's about water or something, um, and it is to be broadcasted in Jordan. So I need to know that. Um, another, you know, I mean, it depends who is my audience, and you know, sometimes they ask you to put it in 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 Iraqi uh, dialect uh, to translate it in Iraqi dialect. For example, they want you to put it in Lebanese uh, song dialect uh, or, or, or a look so uh, this is another thing about the language which language to use in in the multilingualism there and the biculturalism you need to be aware of to understand very well and to be able to follow that in the strategies of war uh, movies depends which war are you talking about as well and which side are you on are you going to be not taking any sides which is you are supposed to but then maybe there is who has commissioned you is it the foreign ministry of Japan, for example? That's why you are, or you know, because each each war movie will be given from a certain perspective, and you need to discuss that with your uh, commission or the person who commissioned you, not the publisher, but the company who has given you the money. But not only that, the ideology component. The economic component, the status component. يعني ممكن يجي واحد يكون وزير يقول لك خذ ترجمة هذه. لأن إذا بترجمة مو على كيفه ما راح يعطيك فلوس. ها؟ huh? So there is the status component which is control factor according to uh, low fever um, uh, economic factor مين حيدفع؟ Status factor if he's a very important person. Is a, it plays a part. Economic factor, ideological factor as well, component. 
يعني read read له further it's, it's very interesting to 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 uh, consider for patronage and whether these uh, factors are interlinked احيانا بيكون نفس الفاكتور مع الكلاينت نفسه يعني الكلاينت نفسه هو ستيتس عنده منصب و ايكونوميك هو اللي يدفع و ايديولوجيكال هو اللي بيفرض عليك منتاليتي معينه تفكر فيها وتبرزها في 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 الترجمه تبعيتك وتعمل سبريشن تو اني اذر كايند اوف ثينج اند ذات از دومستيكيشن ان بار اكسلونس اوكي ثانك يو فيري ماتش دكتور Ahmed, I think that if we let ourselves be carried away in this enjoyable and very interesting discussion, that. we wouldn't finish before midnight. And yeah. we would uh, like... Bedak, yeah. Would you mind allowing me to talk for, for two seconds? Sure. Yes, for, if, if, yes, if, for if, sure. And, and just I want to say bef bef before concluding that... Doctor, Doctor, like Doctor, Doctor, Mahdi, that Doctor Mahdi, are you using this status component here? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, I don't mean it in that. I don't mean it in that way. I don't mean it in that way. At the end of this, at the end of this, it's all right. It's all right. Yes. At the end of this nice presentation for this highly informative lecture on interpretation and the audiovisual translation, I want to express my deep gratitude. For Dr. Ahmed Khodro for for his for the acceptance of the invitation uh, and for presenting this lecture, which has enriched me personally, enriched me a great deal. I repeat my gratitude and deep thanks for your uh, let us say uh, person. Thanks. I'm, I'm so I'm so honored, and I'm. I'm lost for words. I'm lost most, for words. most welcome. Honored to have you with us, Dr. Mehdi, uh, in this uh, sure. session. And I, I would like also to, uh, and I'm really being optimistic about this. I don't think it's a far away that one day we can host Dr. Ahmed uh, on site in our university live. Uh, we will sure invite you. Uh, after the end uh, of the pandemic in one of our academic events. And I'm sure you wouldn't hesitate to, uh, to come over to Baghdad. You are most sure. welcome. We'll meet you live. We'll host you for a number of days, for lectures, for a conference, or whatever that is suitable for you. Sure. And uh, we are still saving more and more for more discussions. And we hope, and, and I'm sure you are generous enough not to reject our future invitation. No problem. Thank any, you. Anytime. And I'd like to thank all the students who have been uh, asking. And then also, I mean, I would uh, recommend for the students to uh, read and read and read more um, about audiovisual from other languages and how they are being transferred, because it doesn't have to st stop at um, uh, Arabic. And you can always follow their model, uh, whatever the model they have used. And there are hundreds of models uh, in the translation studies. I would like to wish you all the best for all these PhD students. And I um, will be more than happy to um, you know, guide, if need be, um, them in their research projects, uh, if they would like to. Uh, I'd, be more, I'd be more than happy. I'd be, uh, you know, uh, I don't mind, I do to have that. And I would like to thank also Dr. Mahdi Ghazali and uh, any other doctors who are here, who, uh, I don't know if uh, there are, uh, of course, I will uh, definitely thank uh, Dr. Beida for, um, uh, for this uh, invite, uh, very surprised and pleasantly, I'm pleasantly surprised to have heard uh, from you, Dr. Beida. And of course, we are always in touch and we have been for some time, and it's a pleasure. It's a, it's a, it gives me great pleasure to be uh, with you and to be with Dr. Matti and with all the other uh, PhD students. And I wish them the very, very best. And uh, they are very promising candidates. I can tell that from their questions. Most welcome. Thank Most you. welcome.
Thank, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for attending and for making this session very successful. I wish you to enjoy, to enjoy the rest of the evening and the night. Goodbye and see you in our next event. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doctor. Goodbye. Must work. Must work.